Praise God. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, someone just wave for us as we wave for you. Uh, this is a beautiful Good Friday that the Lord has made. And we are grateful to be here. We are thankful. Many things have been happening. And uh, there's a trend I've noticed that uh, many young people are losing their lives. And so for me, it's just, what can I say? It's just God. Yani, ni mungu tu niko hapa. Ni mungu, I have good health. Ni mungu, like everything that I have, I just give thanks to God. So um, for me today, I just go to say thank you, Lord. I'm just here to say thank you, Lord for your mercies, for your goodness, for your blessings, as in, well, hey, man, say, oh, God, me. God. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, I, I don't even have words to say. Yes. As in, God is just great. Amen. For me. To me. Amen. And so, um, as we start this service, I just uh, would like you to release yourself. Go to God. Tell him how good he has been. Just Think about everything that he has done for you, where he has gotten you from, and just release yourself and give thanks. Amen. 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 Um, before we start, let us pray. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace and Lord of Lords, we come before you today with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, Jehovah, for the gift of life. We thank you for healing. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your power. We thank you for everything, O Jehovah, that you've given unto us. We don't take it for granted. We thank you, O Lord, even for this service that um, you have enabled us, O mighty King of Glory, to have today. We pray, O Father, that you may be with us throughout. We may start with you, we may end with you, and throughout, O mighty King of Glory, you may communicate to each and every one of us, O mighty Father. Touch us, Almighty King of Glory, and help each and every one of us, Almighty Father, who may be going through something and they need help, O oh Lord. We give you thanks, we give you praise for who you are and what you've done for us. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
wherever our brethren are, men and women, as many, Lord God, as you are causing to watch this this morning. Lord, we welcome you, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Just take preeminence, just take control, just take over, Holy Spirit. Take charge, mighty Holy Spirit. Take over in our lives, take over in our homes, take over in our businesses, take over in our lives, take over in our situations. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wana sifiwe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this beautiful morning. I'd like to wish every person this morning, each of us this morning, a very blessed Passover today. As uh, and uh, doing it, also trusting God that the blessings of the Passover, the blessings of this season will accompany you. And uh, the power of God will come upon your life. Whatever situation that the package Jesus Christ paid for you and me at the cross may be fulfilled in your life, may be fulfilled in your situation this morning. That the Lord may touch you, that the Lord may remember you, that uh, you may reach out to Him this morning and receive from Him the full package of the Passover uh, that happened 2,000 years ago. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. You may talk, take our seats if you have been standing, even in your home. Uh, after the beautiful praise and worship, I want to thank God uh, for the praise and worship that has been beautiful this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God and I greet you in the name of Jesus uh, this, this day. Our message this morning is Passover. Just that Passover, just as the season is, that's what our message is this morning. And uh, this, the Passover, this marks the freedom of, or what is Passover for that matter? It, this marks the freedom of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. That is the Exodus. This is the night when the uh, the Lord brought the children of Israel out of the bondage after they had been in Egypt for 430 years. And uh, after the 10 plagues that came upon uh, this place, then um, in Old Exodus, that's when the children of Israel came out. That's when they got deliverance, or that's when they got delivered uh, from the bondage of Egypt. And uh, in Exodus chapter 12, Exodus 12, Exodus chapter 12, and uh, verse 12, Exodus 12 and 12, basically the Exodus chapter 12 will give you the entire story of the Passover. Exodus chapter 12, 12 verse 12, on that same night, I'll pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals. And uh, verse 13, the Bible says, The blood will be assigned for you on the, on the houses when, where you are. And when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That is how come the Passover. And that is why the summer this day or uh, the message this morning is Passover. Just to, you know, in line with this season, in line with a day like today, when we are celebrating, when the children of Israel were celebrating uh, the, the, the Passover, when the Lord passed over and uh, the Egyptians their children, their firstborn children, their animals, they were all killed on that night. And then Pharaoh had to let them go. That is after the 10 plagues. This was the 10th plague. And they were let go and they came out from, from Egypt. The Bible says that the Lord, these were the instructions that they were given instructions by Moses. Of course, God gave Moses instructions and Moses uh, consequently gave the children of Israel uh, the instructions that they pick a lamb and this lamb they to pick from their flock they to go to their flock and pick a lamb that was without a blemish that did not have any blemish that did not have any spot 
and uh, then they had to slaughter them. Uh, the, the, the lamb, if you had, uh, uh, if you are too, if the lamb was too big for your family, if your family rather was too small for the lamb, then you are to share with your neighbor according to the number that you had. And when they killed the lamb, they took some of this blood and they were asked and they were given instructions to just sprinkle them upon the, the doorposts, and upon the sides. And the Lord said, on the night that he passes over, he says, when I pass over, when I see the blood, I will pass over. There will not be any destruction in that home. There will not be any calamity. There will not be a cry in that home. When I see the blood, I will pass over. And this is the Passover. And then uh, the word of God tells us that in verse 14, there are further given instructions in verse 14 of Exodus 12. It says, uh, this is the day you are to, comm uh, to, this is the day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Verse 14. Verse 14, brethren. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. It shall be a lasting ordinance. And you see this one has been practiced. And it was practiced through their generations until Jesus Christ came. And you find that, uh, that you know, this was in the Old Testament. Right in Exodus, you can see how many years this was uh, but it was being uh, commemorated until Jesus Christ uh, was born, until Jesus Christ grew. Jesus himself, together with his, his disciples, commemorated and celebrated the Passover. You find them going to have a meal, a Passover meal, uh, together with his disciples. Now, Jesus Christ, today, uh, we, are, we are asking, okay, fine, what has that one got to do with us? Today, we are also celebrating the Passover. In the New Testament, Christ Jesus became our ultimate sacrifice. In the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, the B part. Verse 7, the B part. The Bible says, For Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. For Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. So we find that while Jesus Christ, while he was celebrating, while they were celebrating the Passover, he ultimately became the Passover lamb. And you find also John, John the Baptist saying in John chapter 1 and verse 29, John chapter 1 and verse 29, John chapter 1 and verse 29, that the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He said, behold, just look at this. This is the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sin of the world. And we find that Jesus Christ actually became the Passover Lamb. He became our Passover. What used to happen then, uh, I mean, um, the lambs, and you can see, Will, will, will then come to, compa to, to, um, to compare, comparison between the lamb that was slain and Jesus Christ. And you find that there's a lot of comparison. There's a lot to compare. You find that earlier on what used to happen, if people sinned, because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So when people sinned, what used to happen? Uh, men, women, people used to bring animals to the priest. They will be asked to bring maybe a lamb, and the only thing had to be pure and had to be without blemish. And they will bring a lamb, and uh, then the priest will take it, and the sins of the person, the person will confess their sins, and symbolically, uh, the the priest will actually slaughter the animal, meaning the sins of the person. If you had seen, for example. Uh, you, the, your sins will be passed over to the animal. When the, then the animal will be killed. Then the blood will be shed. And figuratively then, your sins, you know, the animal would have carried your sins. 
So if you had sinned, you are, you are, you are, you are sinned, depending on what it was, then the priest will tell you, then you go to the priest and you, you know, you confess and then all those sins, then you lay your hands, the, uh, the animal, uh, the priest will lay hands on that animal and you will slaughter the animal and uh, it will be, a sub that animal will be a substitute for your sins. And that way then, but then, this one, of course, then you have to do it. Every time you see it, you have to go to the, to the priest, and then the same thing would be repeated. But then, this time over, Jesus Christ was to become the sacrificial lamb, was to become the substitute. And this one, the Bible tells us, it was done once and for all. And also, once a year, every once a year, the priest... Normally, actually the high priest will go into the temple, into the holy place, and into the holy of holies where nobody else would access, access except the high priest. And when he went inside there, he went and paid for the sins. He went and slaughtered, slaughtered the bull, slaughtered the lamb on behalf of himself and also on behalf of the, uh, of the Israelites who may have sinned in unintentionally. And this way then, and it had to be done just once a year, and he, the Allo is the only one who had access there. But we find that Jesus Christ, according to the first Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, the Bible tells us that for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. This is what happened. That the sins that people committed were transferred onto animals. But when Jesus Christ died, exactly just like John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that, come to that comes to take away the sin of the world. When the Lamb of God, the Jesus Christ died, all the sins, God took all our sins, my sins and your sins, the entire sins of the world, and transferred them upon Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ was sinless. He was without blemish, really comparing with the lamb, with the animal. And he was without any blemish. He was without sin. He was just, and he had to die for us who are unjust. What does that mean? It means that then, when we believe in him, our sins are washed away. He paid the penalty, just like the animal paid the penalty and died. Imagine, God has given us life. He has given us life and taken death and put it upon his son, Jesus Christ. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews 9, 22. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, the Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins. Without the blood being shed, that is why animals have to be shed. And ultimately, the sacrificial lamb, the substitute, Jesus Christ who became a substitute for us, for the entire world, meaning he carried the sins of the entire world. And you don't need uh, to pay for your own sins anymore. Jesus Christ, and you can't anyway. The Bible tells us in Isaiah that our sins are like filthy rags. So we cannot pay by ourselves. But Jesus Christ, being the sacrificial lamb, being the substitute, our substitute, took up all the sins of the world. He nailed them on the cross. That is the beauty of it all. And just like the high priest who would go into the Holy of Holies once, Jesus Christ, I mean every year, once a year, Jesus Christ did it just once and for all. Why? Because he was sinless. His blood was sufficient to cleanse all our sins, to sanctify all our sins, to wash away all our iniquity. Just once. And he entered into the Holy of Holies with his own blood. Hallelujah. His very own blood, that was sinless, that was pure. He entered into the Holy of Holies and went before the Lord, carrying all our sins, having washed away all our sins. 
that they may not be imputed on us, that they may not be counted upon us. What a beautiful thing. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, which you read actually last Sunday as well, surely he took up our infirmities. He carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. And verse 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was laid upon him. And the Bible says, and by his wounds we are healed. You can see all what was paid. All this was part of the package of the Passover. This is all the package of the cross at such a time as, as this. Because we find them. The Passover lamp when it came to a time like this, on a good Friday, that Jesus Christ was taken, he was nailed, he was beaten. And the Bible tells us when he was being beaten, when he was being scorched, that's when we received our healing. What does that mean to us? What does the Passover then mean to us? At such a time as this. What does it mean? That this is what happened? There was this Passover lamb. Jesus Christ became the, pass, the, the, the ultimate Passover lamb. He became a substitute for us. What does it mean? Number one. Jesus died a substitutory death on the cross. That we might live. He took our death and gave us life. Because... The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So he took away our sins. That's exactly what it means. What it means is that we don't no longer need to walk in sin. If you are born again, my brother and sister, Jesus Christ already took that one away from us. You don't need to take it back and hold it up to He took it away and laid it on the cross. If you are not born again, you need not walk in sin any longer. Jesus Christ paid for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, we can now access, we have access now to the Holy of Holies, the very presence of God. Why? Because when Jesus Christ was crucified, he cried at the cross, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. When the Lord cried out at the cross, when he gave up his ghost, because remember, was, he gave up his ghost, the curtain in the Holy of Holies was torn. There was a curtain, a very thick curtain between the Holy of Holies, between the Holy Place and the Holy of Holies. And this curtain, the Bible tells us, it was torn right from the top to the bottom. And he said, no man could have done it. No one would have done it. And nobody would even have dared to do it in the first place. And Jesus Christ gave us access. The Lord gave us access into the Holy of Holies through the death of Jesus Christ. When the curtain was torn, now by the could, one could not see the inside, the inner place, the Holy of Holies, when you're in the holy place because of this thick curtain that was dividing. But then when it was torn from top to bottom, we had now access. So, it means then we have access to the Holy God. Amen. The curtain that divided the Holy God and the sinful man on one side, now it was open. Through Jesus Christ, through the cross of Jesus Christ, through the Passover lamb, our Lord, we can now access the inner court, the inside, the Holy of Holies. We can actually access the very presence of God. And that's why and it should be our joy always to desire to get into the presence of God and to love to dwell in the presence of God. Amen. Because we have access through Jesus Christ. And any person who is not born again should desire this experience. And guess what? It's already been paid for. You don't need to do anything other than just accept the substitutory death of the cross and say, Jesus, I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. You died for me. I need not carry sins in my life any longer. Number three, we can now walk in good health. We can now walk in good health. First Peter 2.24. The Bible tells us, He himself bore our sins. 
He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. It already happened, my friend, 2,000 years ago. And the word of God is true. The word of God is real. Let God be true. Let every man be alive. The word of God is true. He watches over his word to perform it. If the Bible tells us so, that he bore our sins in his own body, and also he was beaten, a day like today, Jesus Christ took away your sickness and disease. My friend, you don't need to be sick, even if you are not born again. Jesus Christ still has the power to heal you. If you are born again, all the more reason, because healing is the bread of God's children. Enjoy this bread this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. That if you are sick, that is what that is. This is the reason for this season that you may be healed when we are sick, or if we are sick, that you may ask for healing. Jesus Christ paid for it. That you go to Him and say, Lord. You paid this. You took this out. I don't have to suffer. He actually, there was actually an exchange at the cross. There was a serious exchange there. And this exchange took place on a day like today. The season that we are celebrating. That is the exchange. He took away. He was beaten that we may be healed. So do not remain in your sickness and disease. You have a right. Because the word of God tells us so. Here we are. That he was scorched. He was beaten. The lashes, the 39 lashes that he received on the back. One of them. Or if you have two or three sickness, all of them. Jesus Christ died for them. He was beaten. In fact, the Bible tells us that his face was completely changed. He was beaten so badly that his face was beyond... Um, uh, likeness. Nobody liked him. You would not like to see that face. It was so mad. It was disfigured. It was changed because of what he went through. I believe that time there, he must have taken your sickness. He must have taken the tumors. He must have taken the cancers. He must have taken the COVID-19. He must have taken all the colds. He must have taken every kind of sickness and disease upon his body at a time like this. Isn't this a beautiful time for you to get healed? In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up from that bed of sickness in the name of Jesus because it was already paid for. Jesus Christ already paid for it. Amen. I know sometimes people might tell you because you have sinned. The Bible says if you have sinned, you repent and your sins are forgiven. Amen. He doesn't punish you with sickness and disease. Sickness and disease is from the enemy. And Jesus Christ paid that penalty. He took every sickness. He took every disease. He nailed it on the cross on a day like today. Hallelujah. During the Passover feast, which the children of Israel were commemorating till today, by the way. Amen. Amen. So, because of that, let's walk in health. Desire to walk in health. And it is given. It is assured. Amen. You are not bothering the Lord. You know some people think they are bothering the Lord when they ask for healing. You are not bothering the Lord. He already did it. It's something that, you, that was already done. He already gave it to you. For you it's just to take in simple faith. And say Lord I believe. I believe Lord. You died for me. You are scorched for me. You took my sickness. You took my disease. You took my cancer. You took my blood pressure. You took my blood sugar. You took it away, Lord. It was put on your body that I may walk in health. And I refuse to walk in sickness and disease. That is not my portion. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing. We speak health. Upon every person that is unwell and listening to me this morning. I speak health upon your body, my brother and my sister. Even you who is lying on the hospital, even you who is in ICU, in the name of Jesus, rise up from that. We bind the power of sickness and disease from your body in the name of Jesus. It was already paid for. Jesus Christ said, it is finished. When he died on the cross, 
He cried out and said, it is finished. He said, I've taken away all these sicknesses and diseases. I've taken away your sin. You no longer need to walk in sin. I've taken away your sickness. You no longer need to walk in sickness and disease. You no longer need to be oppressed of the enemy. I've taken away your suffering. That's exactly what the word of God tells us. Number four, we escape. We can escape the spiritual death. We don't have to go to hell. Hell is not meant for you. Jesus Christ paid the price. He said it is finished. Such that you need not die without Christ in your life. It was paid for. Don't say, uh, did he also pay for? He paid for every person, every human being on this planet from the time of the creation to death and even to the end of age. He paid it fully. My brother and sister, young man, young woman, do not die in your sins. Jesus Christ paid for that. At such a time as in, at such a day as this, he paid for that. This is a season. This is the reason for this season. That you may walk in health. That you may walk in deliverance. That you may have no reason to go to hell. We have every reason to see God and to live eternally with him. He paid for it. When you go to hell, you are just chosen. You have to work very hard to go to hell. But you choose it. It's a choice that you make. Just say, look, I choose what Christ did for me. I accept it. You don't have to be crucified like Jesus Christ did. He did. He was a perfect lamb. Remember, nothing else could wash away our sins except Jesus Christ, the perfect lamb of God. When he chose to come to the earth, to this earth full of sickness and disease and such, and accepting to die on the cross, he meant good for you. Amen. He loves you, and he has an excellent and perfect plan for you. Number five, he took away our sorrows. He took away our sorrows and gave us his joy. You don't have to walk in sorrow. In fact, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 53 and verse 3, in Isaiah 53 and verse 3, the Bible says, tells us that he was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we did not even esteem. Another version says that he, he was familiar even with suffering. He was familiar with sickness and disease. Why was he familiar? We don't read anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ was sick. But then the Bible tells us, as even Isaiah had correctly prophesied, that even his face was mad. His face was beyond recognition. He didn't look like a human being because of the sicknesses that were put on him, the diseases that were put on him. It changed him completely. Now, he was familiar with the pain. He was acquainted with grief and sickness. This is what Amplified Version tells us. A man of sorrows and pain and acquainted with grief and sickness. Why was he acquainted? Because every sickness of the world was put upon him. I pray that the Lord gives you a revelation this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. That you may desire to walk in health. And be in good health. That you may reject every form of sickness and disease from your body in the name of Jesus. Because that is what the word of God tells us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what the word of God tells us. He took all the sickness. He took even the grief. He took the sorrow. Why are you walking sorrowful, my sister? Why are you walking in sorrow, my brother? The Lord Jesus Christ took away our sorrow. He took away our pain. He took away our grief. Amen. Amen. And gave us, there was an exchange at the cross. And he said, he took our sicknesses and gave us good health. Hallelujah. Amen. He took away, he took sicknesses and gave, gave us good health. He took our sorrows and gave us joy. Amen. Amen. He took away our pain and gave us joy, gave us gladness. I pray that we may walk in these things that Jesus Christ paid for. It was fully paid for. It's like somebody pays for you, uh, what shall I say? Maybe a vehicle. He pays for you fully, a car. 
goes to DTW or wherever it is and fully pays and gives you a receipt that it is fully yours. It's yours for the taking. You just need to go and take it. And then you sit back and you want to start paying for the car, which is already paid for. That's exactly what we are trying to do sometimes, or most of the time. And you feel like, no, I need to pay for this sickness. You don't need to. It's already paid for. It's already catered for. It's a done deal. Amen. It is done. The deal is done. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes of understanding. We'll open the eyes of our hearts. And just that this revelation will just flow through us. That we may really walk in good health in the name of Jesus. And even help others who are in sickness and disease. Bringing them out of this because it was already done on a day like this. In a season like this. Amen. 2,000 years ago. It was already done. It's a done deal. It's fully paid for. It's a car that is paid for. You just need to pick. The Bible tells us early on the, uh, the, in, the, in Exodus that they were told when they, uh, when they killed the lamb, they were to sprinkle the blood upon their doorposts. And when the angel of death passed over, he, he would, I mean, he will not come into the homestead. He will pass over. When we take the blood of Jesus and apply it upon us, if you will, when we take the blood of Jesus Christ and apply it upon our hearts, we are saved. The angel of death passes over. Amen. Amen. We escape the spiritual of death. He takes away our sorrows and our griefs. He paid for all that. He took that exchange. That we should really just be walking. Just like this person who pays, you know, for you a car fully and just gives you a receipt, just gives you the key. It's upon you to take the key or to reject the key. The car is yours. Salvation is ours for the taking. It is fully paid for. We don't need to do to work hard for it. We just need to accept. It is so simple that lots of people miss it out. I pray that you will not miss it out this morning. Amen. So he took away our sorrows and gave us his joy. Because he was acquainted with pain, he was acquainted with sorrow, he was acquainted with sickness. Everything was placed upon him. Everything that was evil, that was unjust, anything that we deserved to die for was put upon Jesus Christ. And then for him who was just, he gave us his life. Hallelujah. Amen. The children of Israel, the angel of death passed over them. For us, the spiritual death passes over us. Hallelujah. Those who are born again, there is no spiritual, there is no second death as the Bible tells us. We will all die, yes, but then there is also a second death. We will pass that death. We will not die the second death. If you reject though, if you reject Christ, how do you reject him? By not accepting what he did, the work he did at Calvary. What he paid for you at Calvary. When we reject that, then of course, God has really no choice. It's like you have rejected him. What does he do? It's like you have rejected that car. He has bought for you. You have refused to pick it. You have refused to use it. And there are consequences for that. When you pick this car, you are safe. You are under protection. When you have the blood of Jesus, just like the children of Israel, you can see the Egyptians, there was death upon their homestead. The Israelites, there was life. They put the blood. When you have the blood of Jesus Christ upon our lives. Amen. We pass from death to life. Exactly the same way. Amen. 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 Then, the Bible tells us that he preached six. He preached good news to the poor. You know, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died a poor man. He wasn't poor. But he chose because when he allowed uh, to be himself to be crucified on the cross, of course he gave, he gave himself to be crucified on the cross. They removed his clothes. He died poor. He died without clothes. He was naked. They took his clothes and they shared them amongst themselves. Meaning those clothes were not very, uh, they were not tattered clothes. If they were tattered clothes, there was no way. People would even, uh, what is it? They even tried to, what is the word? 
Cast lots. Cast lots. You know, Nadia Tapata, you know, they cast lots, you know. And whoever picked, so it must have been something good. He must have worn very nice clothes. And if he did, then he chose because they removed the clothes. He, be, he died poor. The Bible says that he preached that the purpose is to have good, good news to the poor. When he died, the exchange was he took your poverty and gave you his wealth and his abundance. Are you willing to accept that this morning? Because there are people who believe it is God's will. To, it is not. It is God's will that each one may have abundance and have more even to give others. That is God's will. That is part of the package of Calvary. That is part of the exchange at Calvary. That you may have more and you may even have abundance even to share with others. This is what Jesus Christ did. So he took our poverty and gave us his wealth. He walked on streets of gold in heaven. He was full of riches. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that uh, he may not have had physical money when he was here, but he had his father's credit card, which the father always honored. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever he went, if he wanted to feed 5,000 people, he would just produce that and there would be enough for them. If they wanted to pay tax, he would just say, you know, go to the fish and get out there uh, a coin and come and pay our taxes. So he really did. Jesus Christ did not walk around begging. Amen. Yet, he took our poverty and gave us his wealth and his abundance. That is it. These are the good news. If you tell a poor person, you will be rich. This is good news. And this is what Jesus Christ came to preach. Number seven. The Passover, or the exchange at Calvary, means protection. Protection, victory over the enemy. Victory over the powers of darkness. Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. Revelation 12, 11. He offered us protection. He came to set every captive free. The Bible tells us they overcame him. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto the death. They overcame him. Whom is being overcome? The enemy. By the blood. When Jesus Christ died at Calvary. On a day like today. Amen. He gave us power to overcome the enemy. By his blood. That blood provided protection. That blood provided victory. That blood provided deliverance. So we don't need to walk any longer. When we are bound by the forces of darkness, the Lord gave us deliverance on a day like today. Shouldn't we just accept this? All we need to do is just simply just accept and say, Lord, I accept what you did for me at Calvary. I refuse to be tormented by the powers of darkness because you overcame. And because you did, I overcome today. I overcome you, Satan, by the blood. I overcome you by the blood of Jesus Christ. That was shed on a day like today at Calvary. When he said it is finished. Amen. 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 When he died at the cross, he shed his blood. When he shed his blood, that blood is sufficient to keep you, to keep me, to keep us, even the entire world. We overcome the enemy by the blood. We overcome him. And through the blood, we have victory. Through the blood, we have protection. Just like the children of Israel are protected by the blood of the Lamb, the, blood, the Lamb without a blemish, the blood of Jesus Christ, which is much more powerful than the blood of cows. You know, if the blood, by the way, of the animals was sufficient to heal us, was sufficient to protect us, was sufficient to deliver us, then it would not have been necessary for the Son of God to come and die on the cross. But it was not. We needed the perfect Lamb. And when he did die, then we have redemption. Amen. The Bible tells us we have redemption through his blood. And we overcome the enemy. We overcome Satan by the blood of Jesus. 
and by the word of our testimony that Jesus Christ indeed came in the flesh. He died. He rose again from the dead. He is Lord and Savior of your life, of my life. We have to appropriate this in each of us' lives. He took your rejection that you can be accepted. Amen. Don't walk in rejection any longer. Jesus Christ on a day like today, he took your rejection. That's why the Bible says he, even God himself could not look at him because Jesus became sin. Every sin upon the world that was committed and that was to be committed was lumped upon the Son of God, Jesus Christ. It was lumped upon Jesus. If all this was put upon Jesus Christ, why should we walk in sin? We refuse to any longer walk in sin. Amen. 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 So that even if the enemy wants to bring sickness or disease or sin in your life or tempting you with sin, you need to resist it with all your might. Why? It was already paid for. It was already done. It was already accomplished. And you can now walk in freedom. Peace. He gave us peace and took away our punishment. He was punished that we might have peace. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. I pray that this morning you have heard this word. And this word, I pray that the word changes you. That the word changes us. That we accept this word the way it is. That we accept it. And we accept the work of the cross in our lives and appropriate it in our lives that we may continuously live in victory the lord desires that we all live in victory continuously daily amen not once a month but daily not once a week but daily not only on sunday morning but daily hallelujah amen. and now if you are there and you are unwell if you are there and you are oppressed of the enemy. Because Jesus Christ paid this, this price. I want to pray with you this morning. I want you to believe God with me. Because, because of the word of God. Because we are standing upon this word of God. That for such a reason. He died on the cross. His blood was shed. Let us pray. Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. I lift up men. I lift up women. I lift up young people, as many as may be suffering this morning, as many as are unwell this morning, as many as are suffering from different kinds, diverse kinds of sicknesses and disease, because you took all this on your body and you became a sin offering and you are beaten that you may be healed. King Jesus, that, Lord, you may touch the hearts of men and women to accept what you did at Calvary. We bind the power of sickness and disease upon the lives of men and women, as many as are watching this program this morning, and as many as will watch, we come again, Jesus, and command you to come out. Every pain come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every form of infirmity. The word of God tells us Jesus, God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals us. So it is his perfect will to heal us. We speak healing upon our bodies. We speak healing upon those who are unwell, those who are in hospital, those who are at home but unwell, those who are suffering from COVID-19. I speak complete health, a reversal, of what the enemy has done in your life. We reverse it by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we speak health. We speak health. We speak health in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are low in oxygen, we speak an increase. That the lungs, we command these lungs to perform perfectly well in the name of Jesus Christ and to breathe well in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak complete health. We speak and we cast the spirits of cancers of any kind, tumors of any kind. We command them to cease and come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Any person that is bound in every kind of, any kind of oppression, 
We command that oppression to cease in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak deliverance upon every person this morning. We speak complete deliverance. Any headaches, migraines, in the name of Jesus Christ, cease. Any stomach aches, cease in the name of Jesus Christ. Any back aches, cease in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any bone issues, in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak wholeness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Eye issues, ear issues, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every part of the body, nose, the mouth, in the name of Jesus Christ, the tongue, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the neck, in the name of Jesus, the limbs, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every sickness and disease, we command you to come out. It was already paid for 2,000 years ago, a time like this. It was already a sealed deal. We are not asking the Lord to do it afresh. He already did it. It's for us to appropriate it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command healing upon our bodies. We command deliverance, those who are bound by the powers of darkness, those who are oppressed by the enemy, those who cannot sleep at night. In the name of Jesus, we speak sleep and we command every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of oppression to come out. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak healing, we speak deliverance upon the lives of men and women in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Every oppressive spirit will command you to come out. Every young person, young man, young woman bound by addiction of drugs, sex, we cast those spirits out in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ already paid the price for all the sins. So you have no you have no power, you have no authority to continue dwelling in the lives of these young men and young women. Every spirit of alcoholism, we cast you out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we speak deliverance. Upon young men, upon young women, even others who are not young, but are in this addiction, we speak complete deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we speak the victory of God. We speak the victory of God. We speak the victory of God. We speak the victory of God upon the lives of men and women. Upon marriages that the enemy has attacked, we speak restoration. Jesus Christ came to restore and to bring peace upon homes, upon marriages, upon families, upon relationships, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you are there and you are not born again, maybe there you are not born again. We speak healing. We speak salvation. You may repeat this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash away my sins. I accept your death at the cross for the remission of my sins. This day, I invite you, Jesus, to be Lord and Savior of my life. I reject Satan and his works in my life in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, give me the strength, the energy, the power to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, share with us. If the Lord has healed you, share with us. I know the Lord has done something in your life. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it with us that you may rejoice together. Thank you so much for watching this morning. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he sustain you. May he preserve you by his outstretched right hand. In Jesus' name, amen. We worship you, King of all kings and Lord of lords. We exalt your holy and your mighty name. Your good, your mercy endures forever. From everlasting to everlasting, you are.